Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about of problem set 3 of CS50 called Tidman. So basically Tidman it's the the more comfortable, all right? So you can choose if you want to do runoff or Tidman. And the problem here will be pretty similar to plurality, okay? And also runoff. Here we're going to uh, we're going to take a look at an election, all right? And we're going to declare who is the winner of the election, okay? But here we have some things that are kind of different. Let's take a look what are these differences. In this problem, we're going to work with the Tidman voting system. This system is another kind of voting system known as a rank and choice voting, like in runoff. Voters can vote for more than one candidate in which they rank the candidates in order of preference. The difference between runoff and Tidman is that in Tidman, we're going to look at every possible pair of candidates in that election and determine who would have won a race if the election was just between those two candidates. For example, we can see here an election with three candidates and five voters. If we consider the first pair as Alice and Bob, we can see that three of five voters think that Alice is better than Bob. So between Alice and Bob, Alice would have won the election if it was just between the two of them. To represent that, we're going to write Alice and Bob's name and draw an arrow pointing from Alice to Bob. Now, if we take a look at the next pair, Alice and Charlie, we can notice that three of five voters think that Charlie is better than Alice. So we're going to represent Charlie pointing an arrow at Alice. Then the last pair would be Bob and Charlie. And again, we can see that Charlie beats Bob by three voters. So we can draw an arrow from Charlie to Bob. Finally, taking a look at this representation, we can see that Charlie has arrows pointing to Alice and Bob, but there are no arrows pointing at Charlie. This means that Charlie is the winner of the election because he's the source of the graph. Let's suppose we have a resulting graph like this. In this case, there is no source of the graph, which means that nobody is undefeated. What should we do? Instead of adding all of these edges to the graph all at once, we're going to add the edges one at a time in order, based on the strength of victory for any particular pair. In this case, the strongest victory is Alice beating Bob, 7 votes to 2, so we're going to draw an arrow pointing from Alice to Bob. Then, the next strongest victory is Charlie beating Alice, 6 votes to 3, so we're going to draw an arrow pointing from Charlie to Alice. The last pair is Bob and Charlie, where Bob would be the winner. However, we won't draw any arrow, since we would create a cycle, and that's what we want to avoid. Now, the resulting graph is the one we will find the source. In this case, the source is Charlie, so he's the winner of the election. So how are we going to do this? So basically, here we can see in the requirements that they kind of instruct us how we're going to do this. So first, we're going to do the tally. Once all the voters have indicated all of their preferences, determine for each pair of candidates who the preferred who, who the preferred candidate is and by what margin they are preferred. Then we're going to do the sort. So we're going to sort a pair of candidates in decreasing order of strength of victory, where strength of the victory is, the term, is defined to be the number of voters who prefer the preferred candidate. And then the last step is lock. Starting from the strongest pair, go through the pairs of candidate in order and lock in each pair to the candidate graph, so long as locking that pair does not create a cycle in the graph. So we're going to basically do all the steps we saw in the previous example. All right. So before we start, let's take a look at the distribution code we received from CS50, all right? So as we can see here, we have uh, preferences two-dimensional array, okay? A locked two-dimensional array as well. And we have a struct here that has named pair, where it contains two properties, winner and loser. And these two properties are integers, all right? In the future, we're going to understand what this property means. But right by now, let's focus on preferences, okay? And also, we have a string that is an array of candidates, all right? And basically, in this array of candidates, we're going to put all the name, the name of all candidates we have in our election, okay? And other, and other property that we're going to use while we're coding. We have here also six functions we're going to implement, okay? So let's start understanding the preferences to dimensional array. Let's suppose we have an election with three candidates, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, and four voters. Based on these four ballots, you might fill in the preferences to dimensional array as follows. The first row represents preferences for Alice, whose candidate number is zero, and the candidates in the candidates array. That first cell, also with zero, means that zero people think that Alice is better than Alice, which makes sense. The next cell in the first row, with the number three, means that three voters think that Alice is better than Bob. And the final cell means that three voters think that Alice is better than Charlie. The second row represents preferences for Bob, whose candidate is number one. And the last row represents Charlie. The idea is the same for each cell. The preferences array captures all of the data we need about individual voter preferences to determine what the pairs are and who is the winner for each pair in the election. So let's start implementing the first function that has named vote, all right? So let's see what is the requirement here. The function takes arguments, uh, three arguments, rank, name, and ranks. 
If name is a match for the name of a valid candidate, then you should update the ranks array to indicate, to indicate that the voter has the candidate as their rank preference, where zero is the first preference, one is the second preference. Recall that ranks i here represents the user's i preference. The function should return true if the rank was successfully recorded and false otherwise, in the case where the name of the candidate is not valid, for example. All right, so we're going to start doing this. Like, like we can see in here, we have these three arguments. Rank, that will be in which position the candidate is in the preference of that person. For example, in the ballot, the first, uh, the top one choice. Then we have the string name to check whose candidate is on this rank in the ballot. And here we're receiving an array that is an uh, integer ranks array where we're going to update ranks giving a new vote. All right, so to do this, we're going to start looping through every candidate we have in our candidates array. So int i equals to zero, i less than candidate count, and candidate count, like in plurality and runoff, uh, candidate count is, we keep track of how many candidates we have in our in our election, all right? That's why we're using this as limit. And then inside of the for loop, we're gonna check if the name that we're receiving here is the same name that we have in our candidates array. Then the candidates array contains the name of all candidates available in the election, all right? So to do this, we're going to use a function called string compare, so str comp, all right? A string compare, this function will return a zero if the two strings are the same and will return as a number different than zero if they are not the same. So we're going to do this to check if the name is the same. So we're going to do the name and we're going to do candidates on position i. All right, because the candidates is our array with the name of everything. So if string compare is equals equals zero, this means that our uh, the names matches, all right? So the valid, the vote is valid. If the vote is valid, we're going to get our ranks array and we're going to update with the rank of this candidate and the position of the candidate. That's why we're using the number i, because here we're not going to store the which candidate is in each position using the name. We're going to use the, the index of this candidate in the candidate's array, all right? And then we have to return true if everything is good. Okay, so this is for vote. So now let's do a record preferences function. So the function is called once for each voter and takes an argument the ranks array. Recall that ranks i is the voter's i preference where rank zero is the first preference, all right? The function should update the global preferences array to add the current voters' preferences. Recall that preferences ij should represent the number of voters who prefer candidate i over candidate j. You may assume that every voter will rank each of the candidates. So here, do you remember the preferences to dimension array? Now we're going to start building this. So we're going to check, for example, uh, how many people prefer Alice over Bob or Alice over Charlie and so on and so forth. All right. So to do this, we're going to start looping through every candidate we have in our candidate uh, array. So I'm going to do rank int i equals to uh, into rank equals to zero rank less than candidate count rank plus plus. OK, I'm using rank because I want this name. And then we're going to loop again, because since this is a two-dimensional array, the, for, the outer for loop is it's handling the row, and the inner for loop is handling the columns. So we're going to do in column equals two. And here we're going to do rank plus one, OK? Then column less than candidate count, because we're doing a for loop uh, in the the candidates. So now what we're going to do in every iteration, we're going to update the preferences array. And we're going to put in here the ranks rank, okay, in the position of the in the, the cell. So which row are we working with? So here we're working with the, for example, we're working with the row of Alice. We want to know who Alice uh, the how who Alice won if she's in an election with pairs, all right? And then we're going to put here rank column to get who is the op opponent. And then we're gonna do plus equals one. So here we are updating the preferences table all right that's why we're doing this in this case okay and then we just need to return and that's it for this function now let's do add pairs function all right so the function should add all pairs of candidates where one candidate is preferred to the pairs array a pair of candidates who are tied one is not preferred over the other should not be added to the array okay the function should update the global variable pair count to be the number of pairs of candidate. The pair should thus all be stored between pair zero and pairs pair count minus one inclusive. Okay, so here we have two tasks. We're going to update this pairs array and we have to keep track of how many pairs we have in here. All right, so let's see an example. If we have the two dimensional array shown here, there are two pairs of candidates that have a winner and a loser. There is the pair of zero and one where the candidate zero is preferred over candidate one and there is the pair of two and zero where the candidate two is preferred over the candidate zero 
So how are we going to implement this logic in here? So basically we have to look through every uh, cell in our two-dimensional array and we're going to check if the preference, uh, if Alice has more voters 